right? Next way that we can solve systems of equations with two variables that we normally talk about is either called the addition method or the elimination method, depending on your teacher or your book. It might be called either one of those, uh, but it's the same method either way. So if they tell you to use addition or elimination, this is what we're trying to do is here's my system of equations. And what I'm trying to do is add these equations together in a way that will cancel out one of my variables. And we're starting with the most simple type of problem possible because if I add these two equations together, then what happens is, look, 9x plus a negative 9x is really 0x. Okay, well, I'm just going to cancel those out. And that works because they're the same number, but they're opposite signs. But I can't just cancel those out and then leave the rest of this alone. I have to keep adding my two equations together. So 2y plus a negative 8y gives me negative 6y. Negative 20 plus 26 gives me 6. And now I have an equation that I can solve for y really easily by dividing by negative 6 on each side. So that gives me y equals negative 1 because 6 divided by 6, 6 divided by negative 6 is negative 1. Now what I would do is I would take this and plug it back in to one of my first two equations because it's great that I know what y is, but I also need to know what x is. So it really doesn't matter if you want to just always pick the first one you can. Sometimes there will be equations that are easier to plug into, maybe because of smaller numbers or less negatives, but that's not really the case here. I would start off by doing this 2 times negative 1, which is a negative 2, and then I would add that 2 over to the other side, because I'm trying at this point to get x by itself. So 9x equals negative 20 plus 2 is negative 18. I would divide by 9 on each side and get x equals negative 2. So I have x is negative 2, y is negative 1, so as a point that's negative 2 comma negative 1. Alright, so as we go through these they're each going to get just a little bit harder. Okay. Like on this one, if I think about if I add these two equations together as they are, I have a negative 4x plus a negative 4x, which gives me negative 8x. And then negative 1y and negative 5y, that gives me negative 6y. Well, nothing cancels out right now. But in the last example, if the same number was in front, that was good. I just need to change one of these signs because if they're both negative, they add and keep their sign. But if they're different signs, I get to subtract them and they cancel each other out. So I'm going to multiply by negative 1. And that's going to give me a positive 4x, a plus y, and a negative 16. Okay, once I'm done multiplying, I'm just going to kind of ignore that equation now. I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to add these two equations together instead because negative 4x plus 4x will cancel out. Negative 5y plus 1y gives me negative 4y. 0 plus a negative 16 gives me negative 16. So I just need to divide on each side. So that gives me y equals 4 because a negative and a negative makes a positive when I divide and 16 divided by 4 is 4. So let's take this and plug it back into one of our original equations. Now it doesn't really matter which one we plug it into, we just have to plug it into one of them. So since I pointed at that middle one, let's plug it in there. Negative 4x minus 5 times 4 equals 0. So that means I would do negative 5 times 4, which is minus 20. I'm going to add 20 to both sides. And that gives me negative 4x equals 20. So divide by negative 4. 
on each side. And I get x equals negative 5. So x is negative 5, y is 4. That would be my answer here. Okay, so now let's talk about some special cases as well as us making this a little bit harder is now I don't have the same number in front of either x or y so what I can do is multiply one of my equations by a number to see if I can get it like if I have a 3 here and a 6 here I know I need to multiply this equation by 2 in order to get 6's in front of both and I want to have opposite signs like I have right now so I'm going to multiply this top equation by 2. So 2 times 9x gives me 18x, 2 times negative 3y gives me negative 6y, and 2 times negative 3 gives me negative 6. So you see how I had to basically distribute this 2 to the whole equation. I couldn't just multiply what I wanted to by 2. Alright, if I start adding these together, well this cancels and this cancels and this cancels, which really leaves me with 0 equals 0. Okay, and so what I would do here is I would say, is this a true statement? Does 0 equal 0? Since the answer is yes, then my answer to this problem is infinitely many solutions. Okay, if you cancel out your variables, and you get a true statement, then it's infinitely many solutions. Alright, so let's look at another one. It's another special case. Okay, on this one, I don't have anything I can multiply one equation by to get the other, so I'm going to have to multiply both of them by something. And I normally pick the smaller numbers, like 4 and 6 are smaller than 8 and 12, so to me they would be easier to work with. I'm going to try to multiply these by something so that I get the same number in front of each. So if I think about the multiples of the bigger one, 6, my first multiple after 6 is 12. Can I multiply 4 by something to get 12? To get 12? Yes, I can multiply it by 3, and then I can multiply 6 by 2, and I'll get 12 in front of my y's. And they'll have opposite signs because right now they're opposite. So let's look at those new equations. Negative 24x plus 12y equals 36. 24x minus 12y equals negative 60. Now we have the same number in front of our y's with opposite signs. So let's add our equations together. This cancels, this cancels, leaving us with 0 on the left. 36 minus 60, though, doesn't cancel, and it gives us negative 24, I believe. Okay, so here I'd say, is, is this true? Does 0 equal 24? No, it doesn't. 0 equals 0, and negative 24 equals negative 24, but 0 does not equal negative 24, so this is no solution. Okay, that one is no solution. So those are the two special cases. Um, this one, which is no solution, where we canceled out all our variables, but our numbers didn't cancel out, so we ended up with a not true statement. And then the previous one was infinitely many solutions. So we're just going to do one more. Just This isn't going to be a special case, but I want to make sure we understand how to multiply, how to know what to multiply both of the equations by to get something. Like, I can pick either x or y here to try to eliminate. I would pick the y's because they have smaller numbers and because they already have different signs. So what can I get these to both multiply into? Well, I can't get 2 to multiply to be by 3, but if I think about the first multiple of 3, which is 6, can I multiply 2 by something to get 6? Yes, I would multiply it by 3. And for, to get 3 to be 6, I would multiply that by 2. Okay, so I'm going to multiply through on my equation for 3, and I'd multiply through on my equation with 2, 
and then I'm going to finish solving this. I'm adding my equations together, so my y's cancel out. Negative 15x plus a negative 8x is negative 23x. Negative 39 plus a negative 30 is negative 69. I divide by a negative 23. So that gives me x equals 3, and then I would take this and plug it back into one of my equations. Here, the easiest thing to do would be to plug them into one of the two I started with, uh, because they're smaller numbers. But you can plug them into any of them that you want to. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. So I would add 12 to both sides. That gives me negative 3y equals negative 3. So if I divide by negative 3 on each side, that gives me y equals 1. Okay, so that's x equals 3, y equals 1, and that is my answer. So that's solving by elimination or addition, depending on what you call it.